Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And this is the Ned Foss folding knife with a clip. Now, right off the bat, there's actually quite a bit of bad here. So, I'm just going to start right off with saying the things that I think are good on the knife because, uh, to be honest, the majority of the video is going to be very negative. This knife was sent to me by Ned Foss. You can get, uh, they do have a bunch of stuff on Amazon, so if you want to check them out, it's Ned Foss on Amazon. They have sharpening stones, all different kinds of knives, fixed blades, etc. So you can find them on Amazon, Ned Foss. Now, first off, the action you know, let's let's go over the size. It's a four inch blade, nine and three eighths overall. Pretty big knife. D two steel, stainless steel liners and uh, um, bolster, and then we have a glass reinforced nylon handles, steel pocket clip, and it is a liner lock. The action on this thing for the deployment. It's okay. The deployment's well, it's pretty good. The deployment's pretty good. It does fly out there um, pretty nicely. And it's not too hard. The comp the the flipper tab is pretty comfortable and it's not bad. Now the access to the lock bar is pretty good. You can get to the access to the lock bar and the drop on it is very smooth. Now the next thing is the pocket clip. The pocket clip actually works pretty good. Uh, not a problem with the pocket clip. It actually is very smooth. And now the pocket does not tear up your pockets at all. And it's relatively comfortable in the hand. So the pocket clip is actually pretty decent. In the hand, it's actually very comfortable. In the hand, the whole the whole grip, you know, it does have a very neutral grip. Um, and... I like that. Very, very nice in the hand. It does have a nice big stop pin. I like seeing nice big stop pins. That's awesome. It is on um, bearings. So we do have ball bearing pivot to add to the smoothness for the action. And it has a harpoon blade shape with a hollow grind. So I do like hollow grinds, even if it is on a hard use knife. So very, very nice there. Now... We're going to have to start getting into some of the negative. Let's talk about the cutting and sharpening of it, etc. So cutting with it was not very good. It's very thick behind the edge. We're talking like 30 thousandths behind the edge, and it has a, a, a thick blade stock. Now, you could say it's a hard-use knife, but I'm going to show you why it's not a hard-use knife. So, you know, if it was a hard-use knife, then that would be fine behind the edge, you know, but... I think it's a little much even for a hard use knife. I mean, that's not a fixed blade. This is a folding knife. So even if it's hard use, it's still a liner lock knife. But 30 thousandths behind the edge is just crazy. So the next thing it does have, the lockup is so-so. Sometimes it locks up, sometimes it doesn't. But even if I move this lock bar all the way over as far as I can get it, it fails and a lot of times it fails way easier than that so it actually failed on me in the unboxing all i did was just test it like this and it failed right on me and it actually gave me that scar right there so it's already injured me once i'm I'm on a table so i'm really not even hitting that hard it sounds loud because my it was on the table but you see how easy that is So how hard use can it be? Not at all. Um, and, you know, you could argue, you know, folding knives aren't made to spine whack. Yeah, of course. But when I check the lock, when I just went like this, it failed on me. So it's at least supposed to lock. And sometimes it does not lock up all the way, like right there. And I can fail it if I just, you know, mess with it. I'm not going to because I don't want to get cut again. Now... Next thing, the, some of the fit and finish work is just crazy. Like, if you look at the pivot, this is tight on this side, and then it's got a big old gap halfway around it. Small hardware, I do not like to see the small hardware. T8s are 
preferable, but that's not that big of a deal. But when you start looking at the fit and finish work, like look at this. This I didn't this is how it showed up. It's cracked. I mean, this is how they sent it to me. They sent it to me with cracks. Or not even cracks. I don't know. Maybe it's just not. Yeah, I guess it's a it's broken. This is broken right there. Um, the tip is actually poking out of the handle. That's ridiculous. A knife should never stab you while it's shut. So if it's in my pocket and I go like this, it can, it will actually poke me. I mean, I can literally open the knife up by snagging it. Next thing, the detent lash is very, very severe. You can just see it just bouncing all around in there. And if it came like that, and that's how it came. So without me opening and closing it, that's how it was. So if it came like that, it's only going to get worse. Next thing, because, you know, there's going to, you know, it, it doesn't uh, get any better. Um, like I said, the fit and finish is just off in so many areas. Um, nothing, I mean, everything, the fit and finish work is horrible. The, um, the tolerances are horrible. It, do, it is locked up from side to side. That does not have blade play side to side, which is good, but it, you know, the place where I want it to be tight, it's not, it will fail on me, cut me or fail, you know, if it's under too much pressure. So let's talk about how it cuts slicing it does not slice very good yeah you've got a decent grip but it's also heavy it's very heavy and you know i don't mind a heavy knife but it's just not you know it doesn't pass through materials good the thickness behind the edge is way too thick for this knife passing through materials it just doesn't do it, it doesn't bite into materials good and it doesn't pass through materials good so cutting with it and slicing with it is not good um so you in use for slicing um it's i would grab something else always i would never use this to cut with it's just it's just too much effort to try to cut with and especially when i know how soft the lock is i definitely don't you know I don't I don't want to rely on it next thing utility cuts are actually pretty decent There's one thing that it did pretty good. It does have utility cuts down um, the blade shape You know, it's set up for it. It is a harpoon style blade shape. So it did it wasn't bad Utility cuts were just fine. I didn't have no issues with that So the utility cuts, you know, you do get a good amount of leverage into the tip and you have the harpoon to kind of put your finger behind and use. Now, it does have lock stick. Pretty bad sometimes. Not always. Just kind of depends. And then I can feel the bearing sometimes rolling and sometimes getting caught up. Like the pivot is extremely, extremely tight. I did not take it apart because, to be honest, I don't want to fight with it. If I took it apart, I'm scared that I wouldn't get it back together. Not that, you know, I take hundreds and hundreds of knives apart that are very easy to get back together. But when you find knives with this bad fit and finish and tolerances... Sometimes, man, it's scary to, to take them apart because the parts are, they don't fit good together. So once you take them apart, it, you know, it, it can be hell getting them back together. So I'm not even trying it. Um, next thing, sharpening it. So I wanted to sharpen it to see how the steel was because this is D2, right? And, you know, I'm not going to sit there and nitpick their, you know, what they what they have on Amazon like and what they say about the knife and how much they talk about the knife, but I could I could totally tear apart that website like crazy um, And and I'm not trying to say it in a negative way I'm hoping that this actually helps them if anything because if you're gonna sell a knife This is $30 for $30. I can recommend a hundred knives that are amazing for that price that don't have not one of these issues so the heat treat on the steel, I think, if it's if it's D2, I don't even know if it is D2, to be honest. It might not be D2, but it might be. I don't know. I can't say whether or not it's actually really D2. I didn't test it, but I did sharpen it. 
and it does not feel good on the stone. The steel felt very soft. Um, it, it took a while to get up a burr. Yeah, I did lay the edge back a little bit, and since it's so thick behind the edge, I'll show the edge before sharpening. And it actually, just through a few cuts, literally just a few cuts, I I couldn't, it was hard to, to cut through paper. Like the edge retention just went to crap over just a few cuts. So I was thinking maybe, maybe it's the, um, the burnt edge. Maybe it has a burnt edge from sharpening with, you know, from the factory, which does happen. That's, you know, that does happen. So I started sharpening it and the factory edge, you know, it was okay. The factory edge, there was nothing wrong with it aside from it being burnt. But then after me putting it on the stone and feeling it on the stone, I said, no, it's probably the whole blade. It does not feel good on the stone. It felt very um, putty-like. It did not feel hard. It doesn't feel solid. It did sharpen up, but it didn't take a keen edge like you would expect from D2. D2 takes, especially at the low grit I put it on, I put it on a grit that I've sharpened I couldn't tell you how much D2 I've sharpened in my day. I've sharpened so much D2, and it likes a low grit. My favorite for D2 is around 600 grit. 600 grit, it takes a nasty edge, but this did not. It, it's not as keen as I would like. It didn't deburr as good as I would like. After sharpening, you know, I went to deburr it. I actually did two different processes because the one wasn't working good, so then I went to a... Um, I started off by just doing passes on each side to knock the burr off, and it wasn't coming off very good. So then I moved to using a ceramic rod. After uh, trying the ceramic rod, the ceramic rod did work, and then I stropped it. But it just didn't leave a good keen edge. Um, now, I did... Um, sharpen it on my veneve diamond stones too so i used the proper stone stones i've used a bunch of times on d2 and the edge came out looking pretty decent it also has a recurve or it did i kind of sharpened it out because i didn't like it it didn't make sense you know it's kind of one of those situations that make it make sense um it wasn't enough of a recurve to give you any benefits but it was just enough to make it frustrating for sharpening so i did not like that it had a recurve but the edge came out good it looks really good or i'm not gonna say it came out good i'm saying the grip pattern came out looking good the bevel came out looking good you know and it did get i guess kind of sharp i'm not saying that this is the worst d2 in the world or anything but it's not great it did get sharp just not as sharp as I would like. Now, another knife. Um, here's another knife in D2. Oops, that was my fault. Same grit, same, same everything. And it's ridiculously sharp, but it's also thinner behind the edge and everything. So I know it doesn't compare, you know, it was, it's not really right for me to compare that because it's different in so many ways. But my point is, is the D2, I don't know if it's D2, it didn't sharpen up that great. It, um, you know, it was very thick behind the edge, so it takes a long time to sharpen something that thick behind the edge. If I was them, I would go back to their manufacturer or whoever's making their knives and I would fire them. I would fire them immediately. Um, and I'm trying to help. You know, I, I, I hate to come off like this, but this knife is dangerous. This knife's broken before it ever even got to me. The knife has pieces chipped off in places. It has a the tip poking out of the bottom. It has some of the worst detent lash I've ever seen out of any knife. Um, it, and when I look at the lock face geometry, it's no wonder why it fails. It's not good in any stretch of the imagination. It's all messed up. It does not have a good taper. It doesn't have a good landing zone for the lock up. And that's why sometimes it doesn't even lock up. And then... Other times it does.
Like right there it is. But a lot of times it locks up like that where it's not even under it. So. And then another thing, the name. The na There's no name. No name to this knife. This knife has zero name. It's called the Ned Foss Folding Knife with a Pocket Clip. <sighs> I mean, at least have a name. Um, folding knife with a pocket clip. That's every pocket clip. Not, that's every knife with a pocket clip. I mean, I guess they're not made by Ned Foss or whatever, but, you know, it should be like the Ned Foss Predator or the Ned Foss Bulldog or the Ned Foss um, 2186 or the Ned Foss TL22. I don't know. Something. There's so many things wrong with this knife, and, you know, I don't, it's not that, I, I don't like to bash knives on the channel. I, I, I always tell the good and the bad. But there is a level of which it's like, I wouldn't want to buy this knife at $10, let alone $30, when there's so many good quality $30 knives. Um, this, to me, is a gas station knife. It's something you buy for $1.99 at the counter. Um, because then you expect stuff like this, um, at tw in 2021 knives, we have incredible knives out there, incredible knives for $20. So this is ridiculous. And I hope the, the company goes to their manufacturer and does something about it because people should not get knives like this for $30. But there you guys go. I love you guys. Sorry for ranting. Sorry for, you know, such a bad review. But it is what it is. I have to call it as I see it. Peace.